Firstly, to you, Miranda, you tackle this issue quite a bit in your column. Um, it, it would seem that you think that men are pretty shabbily treated? I do. I think there's a toxic form of sort of victim feminism which holds that men are all uh, brutes, they're, they're all little boys, they're incipient wife bashers, um, and that women are helpless victims. And, you know, it's fainting couch feminism. And I think it doesn't do women any good. It's really very retrograde. It's turning back a hundred years of feminism in which women are supposed to be strong and equal. But then the kind of feminism you're talking about is, is, is kind of not the mainstream of feminism. Just in the same way as, you know, pro-rape groups are not the mainstream of male thinking. Oh, yes, it is. It is the loudest form. It is the most prominent form. And you only have to look at the domestic violence, uh, anti-domestic violence campaigns that are being run in which every male is a perpetrator. Every woman is a helpless victim. Well, they're not saying that every male is a perpetrator. Yes, they are. You no, look at the, new, the government's new ads. They show a little boy pushing down a little girl. The little girl is perfect. The little boy is a monster. You know, you're already sort of criminalising masculinity at the age of seven. I, don't, I would disagree because I identify myself as a feminist. A lot of my friends do. I certainly don't think all men are rapists. I just believe that we should be paid equally and um, I believe that we should have the same rights in the workplace and not be discriminated against. So I don't agree that all feminists think all men are rapists. And no, I don't think all feminists do, but I think that the reigning kind of paradigm of the, the sort of feminism that you see in the media, that you read about, it's this creeping in, it just insidious uh, attack on males and masculinity and that, you know, the, the type of masculinity that we, um, you know, that has protected humankind yeah. from time immemorial I see that is now criminalised. I see that claim coming more from columnists than from the actual feminists themselves. <laughs> you know, there's this claim that men are suddenly um, second class citizens, but, you know, with the gender pay gap still at 17.5% in favour of men, women in relationships still doing twice as much of the unpaid domestic tasks as men, both, even when both partners are breadwinners, you know, women are still four times more likely to experience violence by their partner than men and more than ten times more likely to be killed by their partner. It's a bit of a stretch to say that men are second class citizens, isn't it? It's nonsense. Bad. It's absolute nonsense. I mean, what I find particularly interesting about this is, let's be clear, when Miranda is talking about these mainstream feminists, she's talking about people like me. I'm a columnist for The Guardian. I write about feminists all the time. I'm very involved in the feminist movement. And I'm an advocate of the full equal rights of women before the law and attention to the traditions of our society, which has privileged men over women and what that means. Absolutely do I not believe that all men are rapists or all men are dangerous, but absolute nonsense. It's a mischaracterisation of a movement that's not based on facts so much as it's based on Miranda's paranoia. Like, there is absolutely nobody who's involved in mainstream feminist activity in this country, people like me, and my colleagues like Clem Ford, uh, people like Jane Gilmore, like all of Jenna Price, all of these women <laughs> who presumably Miranda is trying to attack here have never once said any of the things that she accuses us of saying. And we have to face a reality. The overwhelming perpetrators of violence against women and other men are men. That's not to say all men do it, but there is to say that there is a definite gender cultural problem here that we as a society have to address because women are being hurt and women are being killed. Okay, Rory, let's, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, let's bring a man into this. Rory, um, what are your thoughts? Do you think that men are, have become second class citizens? Oh, look, I don't think we're second-class citizens. We still, you know, enjoy all the great rights that uh, living in a country like Australia gives you. But there's certainly, uh, um, you know, we're being painted... Uh, I think there's a, there's a certain line of commentary which won't rest until there's some sort of gender apartheid in this country where... Oh, what you know, garbage! No, that's... What look, absolute garbage! Well, you may think so, Van, but, you know... But I, you're talking I, the about me. I, I am writing. that commentary, and that's just plainly not true. Well, the men of Australia, the vast majority of men in Australia, are good men who, who love their women, who treat their, you know, who love their children. They're out there Nobody's on the sporting fields every with weekend. No but one you, disagrees with that. If you dropped into this country from out of space and started reading the media, you would think that the men of this country are um, vastly, you know, they're, they're wife beating, porn consuming. 
uh, wife killing, lazy. That's not true, Rory. Sort of, and, and there's this vast That's not conspiracy to pay saying, our Rory. women less than men, which is, you know, that pay gap is There is a gender is pay gap crap. of 23% well, of women in the media. You are actually speaking to women right now who exist in a media environment that, where we are just, paid 23% less than you. That is ridiculous. That is well, just... Well, can I just pick up Rory a, there? How do we say that the pay truth? gap issue is, is crap? I mean, they, they're the government's own statistics on that, yeah, Rory. But yeah, but the, it, the, pay gap is, the pay gap is portrayed as, as women being oh, paid Rory. less. All right. Sorry. Well, let's get back to that in a minute, Mark. Women work fewer hours. Women work fewer hours, something you'll never admit to in presenting that stat. Exactly. That is, if you, I mean, by choice, by this, choice, by choice. Exactly. Yeah, this is not true. So, but but, but that's, that's even accounting for working in the same professions at the same hours, is it not, Van? Yes, it is true. In fact, the gender pay gap in this country kicks in when people enter the workforce when they're 15. There is an 11% pay gap between f uh, female workers and male workers in the um, 15 to 19 age range. It begins as soon as we start working, which is why, you know, the usual nonsense that the right go on with about oh, you know, well, women go off to have children and it's all because they take time out to have kids, is not true. It is statistically been proven not to be true. Out. These are statistics from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. It is a matter of government recognition. We oh. have just done a survey within the media community that uh, the Media Entertainment and Arts Alliance found that the gender pay gap in the media is 23%. Okay. We represent a gender pay gap all the time. It is true. The you gap, can okay. make the up nonsense, but it stays a fact. The gap for university graduates is 2%. And man, if you think, if you think if you, well, they're the people coming into the workforce in large numbers. And yeah, man, if you think that's the biggest graduates. inequality issue in society, you need to get out of inner Melbourne and visit places like Claymore and Ayres in South West Sydney, public housing estates where the inequality gap between them and places like Vaucluse and Kirribilli and the Lower North Shore is not 2%, it's 200%. Mark, you 200%. Me You're spending years, your and life you, absorbing you the 200% gap from those of Sydney, When if Mark. you were truly interested in social justice, you'd be addressing the 200% issue, you, why which is about class. Why which is about absolutely, both of those Mark, things. in fact, I'd recommend well, that you read my Guardian piddling, article this week, which is about class. One's piddling and effectively a waste of your time in the, in the variations of a market economy. But, but, Mark, 2 you and your statistics, compared you know, to 200%. You're narrowing it to universities university graduates there in order to get a statistic which is not borne out by the greater society. Yeah, but no, in um, your statistics, they're women who are choosing to work fewer hours, Andrew. You're just playing wrong. I don't wrong. think Mark, that's always the right. We need to go back over this statistical analysis again. Oh, do you want Aside back? from the statistics, let's look at the notion that women over the past 40 years, we, we are better educated, which means we have more financial freedom. We don't need a man like we may have needed a couple of decades ago. Do you think there's any um, truth to the argument that perhaps men feel sort of threatened because they no longer have that power in the... or do you think there's any... No, I think the average man's doing quite fine. They ignore most of the left feminist claptrap. They ignore people <laughs> like Van, who are a very, very minority interest in our society. She's a self-declared anarchist, way, way on the extreme left of politics, representing perhaps 0.001% of thought in Australia. So <laughs> she's safely ignored. The real issue for men is can they keep up in the education system at the moment among university graduates leaving uh, every year, 40% are mm. male, 60% are female, a massive advance for women in this country. And when you look at the bottom of society, when you get away from Van's debate about women like her, because left oh, feminism is essentially sake, selfish, can I hear... Okay. Can I speak, Andrew, without you being well, a you, participant? You, you, are you a participant is, in this show or a host? If you insist upon are you a professional the host other or guest, a participant? I'm trying to get to the bottom of the politics. issue, but you try are you to the insult host the of other guests. Program, can professional I, and cool? Can I represent are you the host of this program? Do? You should declare who you, no, what you're I, doing I, at the no, beginning I, of the segment. You should declare your interests at the beginning of the segment. Because I can tell you, the viewers had a gutful of you having a better each way. Pretending you're a host, way. but really being a left-wing participant in the debate. I am trying to get to the bottom of the issue. I have no doubt no, that there not. are you're some... No, you Van, because I made a, a valid point. No, Storm, you didn't, please. Mark. You I have no do doubt that there are some uh, legitimate concerns <laughs> that men have about certain issues. Now, you talk about, you know, there being more graduates uh, than women than men. Great. OK, legitimate concern. OK, we talk about the family law system, apparently these <laughs> days, sure. being skewed away from men in favour of women. True. To, what, this is just not van, true. Please. 
uh, to create um, inequitable results. And also these are the worth that these are worth exploring. And also but do you need to run down feminism in order to no, explore those issues? I'm running down, issues? No, I'm running down Okay, well let, yes. let's, why don't we try Which and keep away from point? personal You're attack? Can, can I defend myself, please, or is a man going to speak over me? No, about you're trying me. to speak over us as Yes, ever. you are Come speaking on, you over go. me, Mark. Here You're proving my point, Mark. You're not even letting me talk about myself. Now, I've known you for 20 years. No, you haven't. I you met, met you. I met you when I was an undergraduate at the University oh, of Wollongong. Well, you know for a fact I'm from a working class family from the suburbs of Sydney, and I write about that in my work all the time. You have to deal with the fact, Mark, that your position is the extremist one. I'm from the suburbs. I'm state school. I'm University of Wollongong, and I'm a feminist commentator who's pointed out okay. the with fact, respect. the fact that women are discriminated against in this society. Let's talk about those trains okay. and the need for safe okay, carriages. Van, okay. Can you just give us a moment on a train when I mean you were a teenager? Because I was. Excuse me, Van. I mean with this with respect to all of you, but I think personal tax not very helpful at this stage. Absolutely. And Rory, I'd like to hear from you um, because you write a column about what men need. So let's try and discuss something that's a bit more constructive. What is it? Do you think that men need to feel um, like you know things are a bit fairer? Um, yeah, well, I, 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 my brief for that column was to give women an insight into how men think, and increasingly over the last couple of years, I've, I've been finding myself having to defend men in Australia, and uh, in, in doing that, I've. By, by defending men, I, I, I get personally attacked and accused of being a misogynist because I defend men. And um, instead of, I, I think, instead of banning men from carriages or having women-only car spaces or any of that sort of separatist, you know, I think that sends the wrong message. I think we should be glorifying fatherhood. We should be uh, lauding fathers, um, um, facilitating them to take time off work to to be with their kids. Um, you know, I've got three sons and uh, I've met a lot of boys over the years and the ones, the only boys I've never liked are the ones who had crap fathers, to be honest. And uh, I think we should uh, celebrate fatherhood the same way uh, we celebrate, um, you know, increasingly and quite rightly, we celebrate women's achievements and their, their advances. But uh, somewhere along the line, you know, we, instead of demonising men, you know, you, you need men to be allies in this fight towards equality. There's, there's no point alienating who is men because without who us, is doing that? you're not going. Are you well, that, talking, that, that is are the you talking question, over the top of me, man? We would all agree, I think, with Rory, that the, the crucial role of men in any society um, needs to be celebrated, right? Um, but, but that doesn't mean that we demonise men by simply pointing out that, um, you know, there are issues where women lag behind or indeed <coughs> where some men um, don't act according to their own best standards. Look, I, but I don't think that that is what uh, people are railing against. I mean, I'm seeing, I'm the mother of two boys, and I see the way society is changing to a, a position where being a man is somehow you have to apologise for. That, that masculinity, the traits that we have associated with masculinity that are crucial for the protection of our society and also that women want in men um, are being sort of criminalised and marginalised and demonised. And I just come back again to these domestic violence campaigns in which the, the true statistics are not recognised. We're not treated all as human beings, each one of us frail with laws, but we are divided up into good good women and bad men. Can and I, I think that is I bad both for women it, and just, for men. It, regarding the pink carriages, why is it so offensive? I mean, because I don't think that all men on a train are trying to rape me, but if I'm catching a train late at night and I'm by myself and there's a carriage where it's women only, you know, if that's a personal safety issue, and I don't think 90, you know, 99% of the people on the train would want to rape me, but if that's a personal safety why push back so much at that? Why is that demonising all men? Listen, if we have a problem with trains where women are so frightened that they don't want to be around men, um, men can also be protectors, you know. Mm, um, but if true. we have that sort of mm -hmm. a problem, then what the problem we have is not a feminism problem or a man problem, it's a policing problem. Our train carriages should be safe. So are you going to put all the bad guys into a carriage with men and have no protection there? Yep. I mean, we're all victims. We're all perpetrators. You but know? But, but, but just, you're not just I good agree. because you're a woman and bad because you're a man. No, totally it's just agree. that most and, perpetrators and very, very are men. very few people ever <laughs> say that. But, you know, to say that um, it's demonising men to have a women-only carriage is to say that it's demonising yeah, all of society Andrew, to have a police force. Andrew, you probably called the you train know? about 20 years ago. The practicality on the 11.30 Mark, train... 
Good on you with your personal Sydney. attacks. Good on you, mate. Good to and see I'm, you sticking well, to the topic again. Well, I am sticking yeah. to the topic. It just shows how little you know about the practicalities of life in the suburbs, because the idea yeah, that you're I don't live in the suburbs, I live in a cloud. No, you live, you live in, 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 in cloud cuckoo land, absolutely. So, look, oh, yeah. the, the, point is, the point is that if you're on the 11.30 train out of the city and there's a women's only carriage and you're a bad bloke who wants to do damage, well, you go straight in. You're not going to respect the pink colour. Oh, yeah, that, that's a really <laughs> insightful comment, Mark. Thank you for giving us insight. Get out of your limo, pal. It's so nice to have a constructive <laughs> debate. Thanks, Mark. Uh, well, listen, Miranda, thank you. Um, and thank Thanks, you, Van. Thank Thanks, you, Rory, Mark. for your insights. And thank you, Mark, for your entertainment. The colour pink We've all... <laughs> Well, thanks for your objectivity, Andrew. And maybe next week you can go back to being a proper professional host instead of participant. If you want to participate, declare that at the start of the segment. And you might get a lot more respect from the viewers. Okay. And once again, I'm finding myself doing time out on these ones. Dial. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Let's move on.